everybody. This is Matt, and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. We are working on our great guitar build-off build, and, you know, I don't like the word build when, when we're talking about a guitar. It's really a guitar. It's not a build. It's a guitar. We're working on our guitar for the great guitar build-off, and this is uh, the neck that Ben sent us, and this is a great little neck. Um, you'll notice that our neck doesn't have any... It hasn't been carved yet, and I specifically asked for that because... Yeah, you guessed it. Chris and I are actual guitar makers, and we are going to be shaping the neck um, like a guitar maker would, not like a kit guitar putter together does. Now, I don't want to talk any smack about the other contestants who have a guitar that the neck is already shaped. You know who you are. Big D, Little D, that lady, what's his face? All you guys who have pre-shaped necks, um, yeah, we're actual guitar makers and we're going to be shaping the neck. But one of the other neat things that this has afforded us is um, we can put binding on this neck and we can run it through our, our jigs that we use to attach binding. And it's going to be way easier than if it was already shaped like those people who we won't talk about who already have shaped necks. But what we're going to do first is we're going to pull all the frets and we're going to toss those. And then we are going to re-radius this to make sure that we don't have some bizarro metric radius. And then we're going to uh, cut for binding and put some binding on it. And it's going to be super duper cool. And in another video coming up after this one, we'll actually show you how we shape the neck because we're guitar builders. So Chris is uh, actually, he's motioning for me to get the hell out of the picture. He's going to pull the frets and uh, enough of the bullshit talk. Let's get started. Okay, so we've got our neck clamped to our bench just so it, it doesn't move around a little bit. We've got a really high horsepower soldering iron. It's an 85 watt soldering iron that gets pretty darn hot. Uh, Matt actually ground a little notch in it that you can put on the, on the fret and glide it back and forth. Um, and that works really well. I've got a really good sharp set of side cutters that have a nice sharp tip right here and that's to get under the fret. You need, you need a way to, to get the fret started to come out. And then we've got these that have, these actually came ground flat but you could also grind your own. And what I'll do is then go along and pop them out. I've also got some water. Sometimes steam helps, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm gonna give a couple of these a try and see what happens. The first step is heating them up a little bit. I wanna try not to burn the fingerboard, obviously. And if this was uh, a maple neck with finish on it, all of this is even harder. A lot of times the frets will be glued in and you'll actually be able to smell the glue uh, once it starts getting soft. All right, let's see what we got. The whole idea here is to not chip it. Oh yeah, these are gonna come out nice. I don't think we're gonna need water. I'm gonna take this. Careful, because the frets, the frets hot. <laughs> and there it is. Let's see if we can get a close up of the the fret slot. Are they glued in? Uh, I don't think they are. No, they don't smell like they're glued in. So that's good. Only 20 more to go. Uh, I've seen people use uh, like irons to do this too and, and set the iron on a bunch of frets. That's a good idea. Yeah, I think so. Um, this really doesn't take all that long. So once I get going, it's just going to be crazy. Got 
gotta be careful right on the edge because if you just yank them, you can chip your edge. For us, on this one, it's not gonna be too much of an issue because we're gonna bind it. But if you're doing a refret, and this is the exact same technique, obviously, that you would do a refret. With rosewood, rosewood's cool because um, as you heat it, you can actually see the wood get more oily around the fret from the heat, and then you'll know when to pop it out. Sometimes it'll even smoke. See me people use chisels like one on each side um, to just do what I did with the green pliers that works well too if you don't have a set of really sharp side cutters Boink. Actually, they may be glued in on the edge. Sometimes I like to try different ways to pull them too. This might actually work better. And then I can work from here. I was working a little upside down there, I'll be honest with you. Yep, that's the technique. I also like to start at this end because it makes it seem like it goes faster because you get further on the board. The last, the last like six feels like the last 12. These are coming out so nice we could almost reuse them. <laughs> can't tell you how happy I am that these are coming out relatively easily <laughs> on video. Only 10 more to go. You're more than halfway done. More you? than halfway. I'm on the downhill side of this project. Uh-huh. Mostly just because I learned how to do that on the editing software. <laughs> yeah. And I think it's really hilarious. It's like I can set it like to a hundred times. I'll do some hundred times speed Ooh. and I'll look really, really good. It look like, like Jackie Chan? Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. The Jackie Chan of, of fret pulling? Uh-huh. It look yes. like like Jackie Chan. Oh, yeah, that'll be awesome. The Jackie Chan of of fret pulling. Uh-huh. Casser a place? Yeah, I don't know. Like Indian rosewood or Yes. Or Brazilian rosewood or Fort Wayne, Indiana? Yeah. The Fort Wayne <laughs> Ebony. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All these exotic places. 
yeah, that I've never it's been. It's Ohio ebony. <laughs> you grow a lot of ebony in Ohio. I don't know. I don't Maybe. know grow there. I don't know. That's where my parents are from. I never heard them talk about hometown about ebony. Ebony, ebony yeah. forests. We used to go to the ebony factory. <laughs> Ready? Here we go. Ow, I burned myself. Ugh. Cool. All right, so there you go. They are out, and they came out really, really clean. I didn't get any chip out, and if I had to put the exact same size fret back in, I could, and you'd never be able to tell that we'd refretted it. A lot of times that's why necks will end up with slightly wider wire on them is because uh, people are trying to cover up chips. All right, so the next step is to give it back to Matt. Okay, Chris got all of our frets pulled and now we are going to send it through the radius machine. Not because we think it needs to, but just to clean up everything and we want to put it to 10 inch radius. It, right now it's at about 9.5. Um, so I've got it all set up here. I'm gonna mark with some white grease pencil and uh, that's gonna show us where we need to go. Could you also do this with a block? Absolutely, you could do this with a block, especially because the neck is, is flat. So it really makes, uh, it makes life easier if you're using hand tools. Rather than having the, um, uh, the profile done, you might get a droop in the neck. You could use a block uh, either a radius block or a piece of flat block like the thing that we got from Ben um, and you could just follow the radius and clean it up that way. So now we have a nice 10 inch radius on here. We burned through some of um, uh, the inlay that, that was on the neck. So if this is something that you're planning on doing and you wanna change the radius, you might wanna ask the guys at Crimson not to put any dots in. We're gonna go ahead and do our own inlay on this neck. So we're not too worried about it. Um, but the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to cut it for binding. Okay, okay I've got my binding cutter in uh, one of my pin routers and I've got it set, so now I'm just gonna run the neck through the, the, uh, the binding cutter. We'll clean up all of this stuff with, um, uh, with said binding cutter and put the binding slot in, the little rabbit, in at the same time. Um, one thing that we discovered about this neck is it's not a direct drop-in replacement for um, a Fender Telecaster neck, even though it has the, the Telecaster squared off heel. It's a little bit different, so if you buy this kit, remember that this neck goes with the body that they sent and don't try and mix and match with something from another another company, okay? Um, or talk to the guys at Crimson. I think that the kit that we got was sort of designed to be, you know, uh, its, own, its own thing, not a replacement for something else. So, all right, let's do this. <laughs>
All right, guys, so as you can see, we now have a little binding rabbit. The binding will go right in there. It'll be nice and nice and tall, probably about a quarter of an inch. And um, we'll go ahead and wrap it around the back here, and it's gonna be really, really snazzy. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this video up because we got a bunch of other stuff to do. In the next videos, we're gonna show you how we bind this. Now, we've already done those videos before, but we're gonna do them again. We're gonna bind this neck. We're gonna put new side dots on it and we're going to uh, start working on shaping it. Remember, this is a double acting truss rod, so it's, it's loose and flopping around in there. That's what that sound is. As soon as you tighten that up, that'll go away. Um, so yeah, guys, if you have any questions about what we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this kind of thing, give me the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. We've been getting a bunch of new subscribers and that's very, very cool. If you like content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys cool stuff like this. Oh, and it irritates Ben when we get new Patreon members. Actually, I think Ben probably doesn't care. But I'm going to send an Instagram extra, uh, picture of this to Ben and see if I can get a rise out of him that way. So until next time, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, build it yourself. That's what I do. Thanks for watching.